Hey guys, Dylan from the Geek Duo here, and today I'll be bringing you a video I didn't think I'd be making. So, a couple days ago, I released my Volume 8 Part 2 prediction video, talking about all of the predictions I had for the second half of Volume 8. An hour, well, four hours after I um, release that video, the official Ruby Twitter posted out something that contradicted a large part of one of those predictions. I saw it an hour after that, which is where me miss saying an hour came from. And now, a day after that, they released a trailer. Now, like I said, I didn't think this was coming out, so... I went to bed early last night and I wake up this morning and see that okay I should have recorded this last night because that's my normal Ruby recording time but anyway this is the volume 8 second half trailer trailer the clash between Salem and Ironwood's forces has begun with our heroes caught in the middle and impossible choices in every direction they will figure out how to save... Oh, will they figure out how to save the Kingdom of Atlas? Or is the war for Remnant already lost? Now this trailer goes for a minute and a half. So I'm actually going to do the breakdown in this video. So after the reaction I'm going to pause the recording, watch it a few more times and break down the major parts. But let's get it started in 3, 2, 1... You deserve so much more than I've given you. You've fought your whole life unwaveringly for what you want, and here I am holding you back. All things we've seen Instead before. Of lifting you up. I have always promised to defend this kingdom from those who would see it destroyed, no matter the cost. Whether you or my hound get to her first. You will finally have the Winter Maiden's power. This is not a situation where everyone wins. We have to choose. So choose. And I will have my staff. You'll only be helping her bring about the end for all of you! You're too late. Okay, so, um... So, first off, before we break this, we come back for the breakdown, I can see some things I've blatantly already gotten wrong, and I can see some things that I've gotten right, and some things that are seriously, what the fuck. So, I'll be back in a sec. And we're back. Okay, so... I've gone through watching it a couple more times, just normally, and then at 0.5 speed, to collect every single scene that we see in this trailer. The first nine of them, sorry, seven of them, is, um, we're all flashbacks. We have Monster Landing at Atlas, Cinder Waking Up, Cinder versus Penny when Emerald's starting her illusion. Emerald watching Salem. Cinder after Emerald and Mercury walk out of her room. And Cinder reaching and grabbing Salem's hand. Now, a lot of the flashback scenes and the audio are from around that same time which is Salem talking to her lieutenants before they fly up to Atlas but um yeah there's nothing to break down about any of these because we've already broken them down the new scenes and these are interspersed with some more um flashback scenes as well as several different kinds of types of audio 
I'm not sure if this first one is a callback to another episode or not, but I think it's what James said at the end of um, episode one, that I have always promised to defend this kingdom from those who'd see it destroyed, no matter the cost. I didn't know if it was a direct callback or a new line, so that's why I actually quoted it. But this is said over six different scenes. The first is, the Grim Army, they've taken out all of the Atlesian soldiers that had lined up to fight them, and it's just some Goliaths and a lot of other ground troops running over the corpses that lay littered around the battlefield. We see James once again pissed while sitting at his desk, slamming down on it with his new robotic hand. This is probably after finding out that either his defenses have failed or a scene that we're going to get to in a little. We then have a flashback of when the Hound knocked Oscar and Ren off of the bike. Then it's the Aesops with the bomb heading towards the whale with the original Aesops, that being Marrow, Harriet, Vine and Elm, each holding one of the four handles on it while Winter charges for ahead of them with a sword drawn to defend them. Now, this is a contradiction to my predictions because I said that they'd fly to help Weiss and Whitley at the Schnee Manor, but yeah, so that's wrong. We then have Winter question mark comforting Marrow because there's a blue gloved hand on his shoulder and Winter is the only one there that wears the blue gloves. So I don't even know why I put a question mark there. Then we have James in his office and he's standing at a raised terminal, which means he's probably brought that central display back up out of the ground. You know, the one where he first showed off his plans for Amity, but he turns to his door, the doorway to his office and he first looks shocked or scared before looking determined and his office is in lockdown mode that being the um, metal and all that have blocked the windows again so this is either Cinder having broken into his office or one of Salem's other troops or again this will be a continuation of James being pissed and will show up the result of that later scene I was alluding to. The next piece of audio we have is Salem telling Cinder she can hunt down Penny, whether her hound gets there first or Cinder, she'd have the Winter Maiden's powers. And that's played over four scenes. The first is Cinder picking through the rubble of an unknown Atlesian building. Now, I think this is, again, the aftermath of the scene that I've mentioned twice now, or it could be the Schnee Manor, though I don't know why she'd be there, but yeah, there are two possibilities. I say it's possibly the Schnee Manor because the next scene is Ruby being tossed through the hole in the side of a building. Now, this is obviously the Schnee Manor because that's the only building we know Ruby to be inside. And this is likely in the first two episodes of the, maybe three episodes of the second half. So she wouldn't have, have, she wouldn't have had time to go anywhere else. We see Penny waking up with red eyes. This was the scene that um, official Ruby tweeted out. And then we have 
what I've listed down as I don't even fucking know because there's some monstrous grim which is likely the hound having completely shapeshifted because it's now bipedal but not looking like a bear wolf it's got a glowing red chest cavity it's got a couple spikes pointed to shield it while more stick out of its shoulders than that and it's got this tube connecting its torso to its neck through which some liquid likely the same liquid that the sentinel spit out rising up and then him spitting it out so yeah i think that's the hound having completely transformed we then also have the flashback to the sentinels rising rising out of the liquid grim on the side of atlas the next um so section has only one new scene and four flashback scenes and the audio is May's speech to Amity team about having to choose. We see the camera pulling back out of Weiss's bedroom in the scene where it would have then showed Whitley standing there. We see Winter's petals. We see Ruby on top of the mantle building from episode one. And we see Jean and Yang in the outpost. The new scene we get, however, is the one that I've been alluding to, which is Crow and Watts. They're sitting in their cells, facing each other. But suddenly, an explosion happens beside them, and it shatters the shielding protecting while surrounding their cells. So... This is obviously in the prison breakout, so this is probably the building that we saw Cinder picking through the rubble of, trying, probably trying to get what's out from under it. And this explosion, probably what pisses James off, and then he locks down his office, brings up the terminal to try and track down where Crow or Watts are in his facility, and then when he turns to look at the door, one of the groups is going to be there. Either it's Watson Cinder or it's um, Crow and Robin. This last section, hold on, is the audio is when Salem is saying that she'll finally have her staff. And they also include Oscar's warning to the lieutenants. And we start with Penny falling from Amity. Then we have a new scene of Monstra opening her mouth, which either means it's going to be <coughs> releasing more waves even after the army has been defeated, or this is going to be her opening her mouth when Cinder and the Hound leave. We then have the candles in a Schnee Manor hallway igniting at the same time, which, are, are these electric candles? Because they mention the power's out, yet we don't, we've never actually seen any light bulbs or that in the Schnee Manor, only the candles in the wall sconces, so... Are they just like fake candles just for the aesthetic like Jacques tie or is this just a creepy like horror all of a sudden all the lights turn on anyway we then have Hazel walking through one of the whale doors looking conflicted this is probably the aftermath of um his com latest conversation with Oscar, though this isn't him walking out of that room, this is him walking into another room, likely where the lamp is being held. We have Penny apologizing to Ruby from 
when she landed in the crater. Well, the crater in the Schnee Manor, not the crater below Atlas. We have the Hound inside of the Schnee Manor gates, which means I called the siege on Schnee Manor. And I said it would be happening early in the second half as well. And then the final... No, that's not the final scene. The second last scene we have is Salem being extremely pissed at Oscar. And she grabs his head with both her hands and looks like she's going to gouge his eyes out. And this is probably... When she finds out that Oscar gave Hazel the lamp's name. Like, let's say, Hazel asks his question. He though goes and confronts um, Salem. Something happens between them. And then she goes to Oscar. And the final scene is Ruby looking scared at something while inside the Schnee Manor. So this is probably Penny when she's woken up with the red eyes. Now, like I said, there's already been some major contradictions to what I said. Though a lot of what I said can still happen. Specifically, everything that happens with Mantle Team can still happen. Um... The majority of what I said would happen with the villain team can still happen. Most of what I said with Amity team can still happen. The prison team I'm is happening pretty much how I said it. And I think that's all five teams. Let's see. Amity, Mantle, Villains prison uh Aesop's that's the one I got completely wrong I said that they'd go and help mental team not mental team Amity team in getting away from the hound that's tracking them down no they're going to stay and obey orders and all that there is still the possibility of one of my predictions with them coming true but I'll get to that if it actually happens. But yeah. Going based off of each team is 20%. We can still have maybe 65, 70% of what I said would happen actually happening. Maybe bumping up to 75, I don't know. But yeah, majority of what I said could still happen. But I did get some points very wrong. Anyway, I this has just gotten me excited again for the season to come out. So I'm going to end this now and watch the reactions f from the other YouTubers that, have, that I watch that I haven't been able to watch till now. Catch you in the next one.